First up is that piece on bullying. The story of Retea Parsons of Halifax has gripped the country. The 17-year-old died after trying to take her own life. She had been bullied constantly after photos of an alleged sexual assault were circulated. Reggie Lawrence is trying to make sure such tragedies don't happen here. The Conception Bay South native came so close to making Canada's Olympic team in Taekwondo for the London Olympics. While it might seem surprising given his martial arts prowess, Reggie was actually severely bullied when he was in junior high and high school. These days, he's sharing that experience with local youth and trying to teach them how to take a positive from the experience of being bullied. We'll be right back with Steve's piece with Reggie after this short break. Reggie Lawrence has fought his way around the world. A five-time national medalist has competed in places like Bangkok, Greece, London, France and Mexico. The Conception Bay South native came within two matches of representing Canada at the 2012 London Olympics. But ironically, not so long ago, Reggie Lawrence was bullied. I guess my surroundings became kind of violent and for some reason I became very targeted um, for that, for their violence and you know, it started progressing there. In high school, I thought it might get better when I went to my high school, but it actually got worse. Much, much worse. In fact, Reggie wasn't just bullied by a small group. He was targeted by a mob of students. He recalls being swarmed one day while playing hacky sack at school. I heard these voices and chanting and cheering and getting louder and louder. So as they came around the corner, it had to be at least 200 people. And it really was at least 200 people. A lot of people weren't even from the school. Um, so when they came around the corner, uh, they surrounded the hacky sack circle that we were playing with against the wall of the school. So, you know, the guy, you know, they, they had someone planned to fight me. So when he came in, I tried to kill time and, you know, it was really scary. I knew that they were going to jump on me soon. So that's actually a long story. But what came of it was they all jumped on me and... You know, I had to defend myself for a long time until the principal came out and the vice principal. And, uh, you know, I did survive and I wasn't that badly hurt. Reggie's childhood dream was to be a ninja. And lucky for him, he had started taking martial arts classes. He used some of the techniques to withstand the attack. Uh, when you're grappling, if someone's under you, you can actually hug them and allow them to be your armor, like your protection on the, on the front of you. So, you know, I, I just hugged them when I was down on the ground and when they were trying to kick me, they were actually kicking him. And I could hear his breath going out, so I just stayed there as long as I could and hoped that they still thought that they were kicking me. But, you know, it was unfortunate for him, but that's what I had to do in that moment to, uh, to survive, I guess. Because it was very overwhelming, like, they were all very angry, definitely mob mentality. But that's, that was that event. Reggie estimates half the school population were siding with the group. He believes the throng had power and were dangerous. Being targeted by them took its toll socially and mentally. It was always more uh, just the sensation of like you can't go anywhere, like you, there's nowhere really you can hide. Although that's all I tried to do was just try not to be seen. But because the more I was noticed, I find the more attention was drawn to me and I just, you know, I couldn't really escape it. So the bullying that came to me was always something to do with violence. It could be words, very frequently as words, because they couldn't really catch me. I'd always find a way out. So it was really the constant fear, I guess, of just being out in my own environment. Because every time I would encounter them, I'd end up have, having to run from them or have a friend that wouldn't run and realize that I'd have to stick with him and then he'd get hit and then we'd both be running. <laughs> Mentally, I was very broken down, very not confident, because it, it was like I wasn't allowed to be confident. So mentally, I was just very weak. And all I wanted to do every day when I went to school was just not be seen, not be noticed. So uh, it was just very scary. Things changed when Reggie started hanging around with students from another high school. He felt he was allowed to be himself, and he started gaining confidence. That was towards the end of grade 12, a few months after he had taken up and fallen in love with Taekwondo. My biggest uh, increase in confidence came from when I started hanging out with new friends that weren't around my area at all. They were actually from a school called PWC. And at that time, PWC was a very popular school. And 
and I realized why when I went to one of their parties. When I went to one of their parties, everybody was very friendly with each other and me, and the, the types of people were very diverse, and it was a huge house that someone allowed them into their house to have a party. Um, where I lived, if there was a party, the chances of this house being wrecked is very high. I mean, it would have to be 80, 90 percent chance. So no one really had house parties unless they were okay with their house being really wrecked up. So when I was at this party, I realized how, you know, there's, a, there's another world out there. The ability to be in a ring with just one person and not having any fear of someone jumping in and just seeing how good you can do against this one other person and it's respectful because it's martial arts. Uh, it, it just, I found my career in, in, the, in the martial art world just shot up very quick. Reggie says the bullying added to his drive to succeed in the new sport and not because he was angry or bitter. That lack of confidence that I never had growing up and especially through high school and junior high, just that, that fueled me because I never felt confidence before. So all of a sudden I was in this area where people were cheering for me, but really I was cheering for me because I'm doing so well and I'm doing something that I was always so afraid of, which was confrontation. So in that sense it fueled me, yes, but not from anger, just from inspiration, I guess. It inspired Reggie enough to rise through the sports ranks. After competing all over the world, including at the World University Games in Thailand, he set his sights in the Olympics. A painful setback came during a tournament before the London trials, when he completely detached a ligament in his knee. At that point, uh, I was facing a really hard, challenging time in my life because my whole life has been based on just trying to be the ninja, I guess, and trying to get to this goal of Olympics. And, you know, it was almost like my, my legs were literally taken out from under me. Reggie worked hard at rehabilitating himself and getting ready for Olympic trials. Despite his efforts, he would finish third, and that sent him on an emotional roller coaster. He had a choice to make, to continue training for another four years and another shot at the Olympics, or to return home to Newfoundland and continue a career in financial planning. He chose the latter because he thought it would give him a chance to inspire others, particularly young victims of bullying. You know, it'd be great for kids today growing up to just be, to hear from someone that's been through, you know, extreme bullying, I guess. To, to let them know that you know there's light at the end of the tunnel. There is ways and things you can do to, to help yourself and to put yourself in better situations. There really are. But if you don't have someone telling you, then you don't know how to go anywhere. <laughs> you just have to figure it out on your own. Reggie is now home and settled into his career. He's also started talking to youth about bullying. He recently addressed a group of students from across the Avalon and hopes to soon start going into individual schools. He wants to encourage youth to try and take positives from being bullied and to help them be their best. He dreams of someday opening a health and wellness facility that involves martial arts and that same be your best message. He continues to train and may even return to competing down the road, but for now Reggie Lawrence is focused on succeeding at other things. There's nothing I, I do regret about it at all because you know it was, it was an experience of a lifetime and it was a continual experience of every day trying to be my best. And you know, very fortunate with the sponsors I had to allow me to do that. I didn't have to focus on anything else besides just being the best person I can be in every way I can. Because um, that's the only way you can win. 